So you've decided to welcome an adorable new pup into your family. It's time to celebrate, but it also calls for some serious planning. Obedience training, potty training, and not to be forgotten, crate training. If this is your first time training a pup, it could be overwhelming, not just for you, but also for the little guy. But fret not, we've got some helpful tips to help you build your furry family. In this video, we'll explain how to properly crate train your pooch so it becomes a positive place for your doggy. We'll also address some questions that you may have been chewing on for a while. But first, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell. Becoming a doggy mom or dad takes time and dedication, so we don't want you to miss any of our helpful videos to help you along the way. So why should you crate train your dog? Many new dog owners worry that crate training is cruel or distressing for a dog. But when done right, this is hardly the case. A crate can be a favorite place for your dog to hang out, just like a favorite room in your home is to you. As long as you don't use it to punish or hurt your dog, it could be a comfortable and safe place for them. A crate will also save you a lot of headaches. Dogs take time to learn a new routine, so they'll often experiment and do things you may not appreciate until then. Chewing on your shoes or treating your houseplants like his or her toilet is not what the doctor ordered. If you can't supervise your puppy all the time, then you want to limit them to a safe area where they can't cause damage. For shy pups, they'll be howling for joy at the sight of their crate when the house is noisy or crowded. The crate is his personal space to rest in, free from household stress, at least for a part of the day. It will also eliminate some of the pain and frustration involved with house training your curious pup. Even when your pup seems clumsy and messy, they'll try to keep their sleeping areas clean. When confined to a crate, your pup will learn how to hold and strengthen its bladder and bowel muscles. Just remember to set a routine to let your pup relieve themselves outside so they know the right place to go. But we'll save house training for another video. Lastly, you'll eventually want to take your dog on trips or to see the vet. When that time comes, you'll be grateful that your dog is already crate trained for easy transportation. When done right, crate training doesn't only help you, it creates a well-mannered and well-adjusted member of your new family. Why does crate training work so well? The secret to the effectiveness of crate training is how it takes advantage of a dog's natural instincts. Dogs are den animals. They look for a comfortable, quiet, and safe place when their environment becomes overwhelming. You're providing the space for them with a crate. Just like other den animals, dogs will try not to use the toilet in the same place they sleep. A crate helps them where there is space and where there is need to control their bladder. Dogs thrive on routine. It relieves stress and helps them know what to expect in their new family. A crate is a great base to form the routine that will shape your dog's outlook and life. So, how do you crate train your pup without losing your mind? Start off on the right foot so your pup learns that a crate isn't something to fear. First and foremost, you need an appropriate size crate that will serve as an ideal space for your growing pup. It should neither be too large nor too small, otherwise it will be uncomfortable for your dog. We'll cover this more later in the video, but generally your dog should be able to stand up, turn around, and lie down easily inside the crate when they're at their full adult size. When you first introduce the crate, put it in a central place that's usually near you, such as your living room. Your dog won't like the crate if it associates loneliness and abandonment. The trick is to make it a consistently pleasant experience. Once you have a great location, let your pup get used to it. Walk them around the crate, play in the crate, and hide treats and toys in it. Also make sure that they're clean, soft blankets to sleep in there, or a dog bed that fits. Your pup is more likely to go in when the crate is clean and comfortable. Once your pup is comfortable around the crate, it's time for the next step, getting them comfortable in the crate. Start by feeding your pup in the crate with the door open. If you've played with them around the crate often enough, you shouldn't have trouble coaxing them in. If they appear distressed or unhappy initially, try to force them to stay in the crate. Let them become more comfortable and try again later. Over the next few days, start closing the door bit by bit. When you get to the point where the door is fully closed, stay with your pup while it's playing or resting there and continue interacting. Once your pup indicates it wants out, or after a few minutes, open the door. This signals to your pup that the crate isn't a prison and it's free to come and go. Over time, your pup should start to go in the crate without any coaxing. If you notice this, reward them with a treat to help reinforce the habit. While you're with your pup and going about your daily routine, 
continue practicing shutting and opening the crate door a few times. This will make your pooch feel that it's normal being in a crate and they won't be distressed that you're gone. Trust us, your pup will notice if you always shut the door and leave, it will resist going in there as they build a negative association. Congratulations, you've taught your pup how to use and enjoy its crate. But there are still some important points to go over. The Rules of Crate Training Your Pup Like we mentioned earlier, rule number one is to always get a crate that's the correct size. You wouldn't want to sleep in a bed that's too small, and neither does your dog. But getting a crate that's too large can make house training them harder as they won't associate the entire crate as their place to sleep. Second, never leave your pup alone in the crate for more than four hours at a time. Remember that they're a living, feeling being, and they need time to roam and relieve themselves outside. Plus, not allowing them to get suitable exercise and interaction with their human owners can lead to health and emotional issues with a growing dog. Which brings us to rule number three, let your pup exercise before going into the crate. This is super important. Experts recommend 30 to 60 minutes of aerobic exercise on average, but check with your vet to see what's best for your dog. Having too much pent up energy and not being able to let it out will lead to a lot of stress for your pup. Rule number four, make sure your pup has enough water while in the crate. A crate bottle for drinking is great as there's little chance that your pup will spill and lead to discomfort in the crate. Rule number five, don't use the crate to punish your pup for misbehavior. They'll come to associate the crate with pain and fear, which will cause a lot of stress to be there. Your pup will respond better when you use treats, toys, and food to associate good experiences with the crate. Rule six is to leave the crate open when you're home, so your dog can go in and out freely when it needs a safe place. Teach your children and guests to leave your pup alone if it goes in the crate. The last thing you need to stock up on is patience and you need oodles of it. Crate training can take anywhere from a few days to a few months, and during that time, your pup might whine while you're trying to sleep and act out when you forget to lock the crate. Be patient with your pup and yourself. Remember that you're working to create a well-mannered member of your household, and also saving yourself from going crazy. In time, you will succeed. What about the type of crate? The crate you should choose has a big impact on how your dog associates with it. Again, it should be the right size for them when they're an adult, somewhere over two to four inches when measuring their adult size from nose to the base of their tail is recommended. Like Goldilocks, you just need to find the right size for them. Crates with adjustable panels are a great option for a growing doggy. They provide more space as your pup grows and you don't have to worry about buying a new crate every month. You could also choose a crate that fits your dog's adult size and separate it with a box to minimize the space. The crate should also be sturdy and secure enough to prevent your crafty pup from escaping with its paws, tongue, or nose. One of our favorites is the Diggs Revel Crate. It's both sturdy and comfortable for most pups. We'll include a link to it in the description below, but any crate can work so long as you make it work for your pup. What about food and water in the crate? You should always make sure your pup has access to water when it wants. You can also give them food especially if your pup is going to be in there for several hours or during feeding time. Choose non-tip bowls to avoid accidents that can make the crate uncomfortable or an automatic dog feeder with a timer. Just remember that with feeding comes toilet time, so be prepared to let them go out and do their business when they need to. How do I handle whining? Whining is normal while your pup is getting used to your absence while in the crate. Remember that your pup could also be whining to signal that they need a toilet trip. Young puppies especially have trouble sleeping through the night without a potty break. But if your pup is whining for attention, try to let them get used to your absence. Giving in will reinforce that behavior, so keep them reassured but stick to your schedule. What if they use the crate as a toilet? If the crate is too large or they're overly distressed in the crate, this could happen. Try sizing down the crate by placing a box or another safe barrier on one end of the crate and spend more time with them while they're in the crate so they feel comfortable. It could also be a sign that your dog isn't getting out enough. Dogs hate to relieve themselves in their den, but they will if they absolutely can't hold it anymore. Be flexible with their potty schedule and make adjustments as needed. What if they don't like having the door closed? Getting used to an enclosed space takes time. If you've gotten your pup used to the crate closed, but they're still distressed, try going slow. Leave the door closed for only a minute or two at a time and try to build them up from there. They may need more time than you might think. 
but remember to stay with your dog while the door is closed so they feel more comfortable. My dog is crate trained, but it is using the crate as a toilet again. There could be any number of reasons this is happening. The best advice we can give is to start the crate training process over. Continue following the same routine for several weeks until your dog is mistake free. If they still aren't making progress, speak with your vet to rule out any health issues and check their outdoor schedule again to see if it needs further adjustments. Give time to your pup and yourself. There will be ups and downs, but your pooch will make you proud and it'll be worth it in the end. Check out our full guide for crate training in the description below along with other great links. Have some great advice for would-be dog parents? Please share them in the comments below and tune in again for more great doggo content.